So I want to introduce activity within WorksOS to the broader user base for WorksOS. Upon selecting a project, any project that has activities that have been created will automatically load the new activity dashboard. This dashboard is a supplementary dashboard that is optional for use when using activities within WorksOS. Activities in WorksOS are created from the activity and viewed from the activity table page. To add an activity, you need to define the activity by giving a name and then specifying an optional cost code and then choosing which type of calculation you're going to use to track the activity. This is the activity type. The first type we're introducing is Earthworks type, and we can calculate within that type a subtype, which is cut and fill, cut, or just fill. This is what's going to be used to quantify and calculate the overall estimate and then track the progress once it begins. To define this, we choose a starting surface. Typically, this is something like the original ground or existing ground measurement. And then we calculate that to the target design. So any target design that's loaded, any survey that's loaded can be used as a starting surface or target ending surface in the design case. We can refine that calculation further by adding a custom area. These custom areas are created within WorksOS and they're done from the map page. Once we've specified the calculation and how we want to calculate, you notice that it will give you a volume. It'll break it down between the estimated cut, fill, and then add those together to give a total volume. So if I just want to monitor cut, since this is a cut area, I can hit change the type subtype to cut and give it a name. The next step I will do, I'll go in and give a target start and end date. So this is when we're anticipating that this activity is going to start. So I anticipate this is going to start at the beginning of next week. And then I can give an estimated working rate or a target end date. So I know that with the machines out there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complete this pretty quickly. I'm going to work on this. And I'm going to achieve about 40 meters cubed per day. So I should have this done by the middle of next week upon starting it. Once I add this to the list, it's going to automatically then calculate the actual start date and the actual end date based on the data that we receive from machine control and survey data. So we will look and see, okay, once we've reached the start date, did that change, right? Do we have a change in the amount of cut volume that is left to be done? So we'll always calculate, from the standpoint of the activity, we'll always calculate what is remaining. And then we can back calculate from that. Using the initial estimate, we can calculate how much then has been completed. So you can see in this case, for this activity that's been going on since September, we've reached 98.93% completion for this particular activity. This is just using machine and survey data. So we really have very little to go, if any, right, based on the data we have available. We show a cut fill map on the dashboard for a single activity. We show the work remaining, and that is a progressive work remaining over the last seven days, as well as then calculate a target, the target working rate versus the actual working rate. So if I look at the activity that I just created, find it here, whatever I titled it. So I can see that one that I titled cut area, it has not started yet. It's scheduled to start next week. So the estimate and the cut remaining are identical. And we see here from the volume, right, we shouldn't see anything moving, right? So this is recent change, but we don't have any change because the activity has not started yet. As a user, you can go in back to the table. You can start a particular activity if it starts ahead of time, but just know that there is logic. We do that through the set activity dates. So I can put in the actual start date. So if we finish something else early and we started this one ahead of time, I can go in and, and start that activity. I can put in the actual end date so I can finish out or close out the other activities that are in my list by simply going into the same activity dates and then I can put in the actual end date, right? This closes out the activity and really sets up parameters on what that final volume you know, was that was completed. Uh, also gives us a good place of reference to visualize the, the as-built information and the cut fill maps from that subsequent activity. Going back to the activity dashboard, um, we do have views. So you can view a single activity at a time. You can view all activities. So we can see a, a status report, the percentage complete for all activities that are within the particular project. So you can see we're doing quite a nice job here of tracking and calculating this through. Most of the work on this one is done. So in this case, we see these progressed you know, pretty far along here. We can filter this uh, activity list. So we can view all that have started. We can view the ones that have not started. So I can hit apply here. So this gives me an idea. Two of the ones that we created were not started, ha either haven't started or didn't get started because we didn't detect it. And then we can view it based on the ones that have finished, right? 
So remember, we have logic that drives this, but also user interaction. Last thing to mention is any of our activities that we look at, right? Whether it's from a multi-activity view or the single activity view, all of these widgets act as filters. So if you want to investigate more, change the calculation up a little bit, um, see historical you know, measurements of that calculation, you can always use that to click through to the map. This sends us through to the full map page where we can you know, set different filters, run different queries against this. We can fully interact with this data by drawing profile views. You know, creating other visual visualizations or reports. That's all done through the map page then at that point in time. But it uses all the parameters that are set up for activity. You'll notice here in this case, we define this as a cut activity. The enhanced logic we've added is for all cut activities. We're going to use the lowest pass or the lowest elevation during that activity time frame to give us our answer.